once was a maiden who lived all alone, wanting so much to have a child of her own. A witch overheard this tale of woe, and a little girl from the magic sea did grow. And welcome to today's story, a delightful tale which begins in this little village filled with happy singing birdies singing a happy tune and villagers happy, happy villagers, young and old, old and oh, so very young. Mm. But what do we find in our happy village but an unhappy maiden? Unhappy for she wanted a child of her own so badly. Not knowing just where to get one, she went to the home of a local witch for help. Poor dear. Yes! So, what is it you want, my dear? Spit up now! Um, is it true that you can grant any wish? Any wish at all? They don't call me a witch for nothing, Missy. Now let's get down to business. I would like a child of my own more than anything else in this whole world, but I don't know where to get one. Well, that's simple. Why didn't you say so right off? <laughs> there you are. One wish to go. A magic barley seed of your own. A magic barley seed? That's right. Take it home and plant it and water it overnight. But how will that get me a child? Any questions? Now just say thank you and go home. Thanks, old witch. I guess. And hoping that she guessed right, the young maiden went back home and did as the old witch had instructed her. She buried the barley seed, and that night she prayed. And was her prayer to be answered? Well, let's just say her dream began to blossom <laughs> right before her very eyes. <gasps> oh, it's a flower. Oh, I love this part. Ah, so that old witch did grant my wish. It's a beautiful child. <laughs> Tell me, child, what's your name? <laughs> well, then, I think I'll just have to give you a name. Why, you're no taller than my little thumb. I think I'll call you Thumbelina. Thumbelina. That's me? And from now on, I will be your mommy and love and care for you. Really? That's so nice. Oh, yes. Now, what must we do first? I know. We have to make a bed for you. And the maiden made a very special bed from the shell of a walnut, covered her with a rose <laughs> petal, and Thumbelina loved it. Good night, my lovely flower of a child, and may sweet dreams be yours. Good night, sweet dreams. <laughs> and so it was that in this place a dream had come true and a new happiness was dawning bright as the summer sun. <laughs> well, this is a fairy tale. Good morning. The birds are singing. Good morning. And what a glorious morning it was for the new mother and Thumbelina. The maiden knew just how to entertain her. First, she made a tiny boat for Thumbelina out of a petal and set the tiny girl afloat in her finest china plate. It was as if Thumbelina had a sea all her own to sail in. Oh, how the maiden loved to hear the sound of Thumbelina's laughter. And as if they'd been together for many years, the maiden certainly knew how to make her laugh. As you can see, it it took no time at all for the two ladies to become just like every other happy family in the village. What's this? Oh, it's silly bee. It's night time. Shh, Thumbelina's sleeping. What a 
beautiful little lady. She'll make a perfect wife for my son, and then they can have a pet all their own. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, uh, what's happened to Thumbelina? Oh, there she is. awoke to find herself out in the middle of a pond. Frog napped. And she began to cry. Hey, what you crying about there, little girly? I want to go back to my house and mother. But you see, you are home. And I'll be your mother after you marry Junior here. <coughs> You'll make a perfectly lovely bride. There's no way I can marry a frog. Dear little thing, why fret? This is clearly a time to <coughs> jump for joy. <coughs> No, I will never become the wife of a toad. Never! <laughs> now, Junior, stop teasing the sweet little wife. We must go and prepare her wedding chambers. Come on now, hop to it. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Thumbelina. And just as it seemed like things couldn't get any worse. Now we're going to take your beautiful bed and stick it in some delightful fresh mud for you. That's right. ta -da. Oh, poor, poor Thumbelina. <laughs> oh, that most unfortunate girl. Can you imagine her living with those awful toads? It makes me squirm. That girl married to that gruesome frog. Well, I for one won't allow it. Well, maybe we can think of a way to help her escape. I've got it! Huh? <laughs> oh, me? Little Missy! I can't see who's calling me. Look over here. Here in the water. Why, hello there, fish. We are going to help you solve your problem. You don't have to get married. I don't? No, it's hopeless. I'm stuck here on this pad. You just leave everything to us and you will be free as the breeze. Mm -hmm. Let's do it! Oh, nice! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. The lily pad's moving! Goodbye now, and be happy, little girl! And watch out for strange creatures. Keep yourself well! Goodbye, fish! Thank you all for saving me! At last, Thumbelina was free. Free to venture out into the world in search of her happiness. Free to explore her horizons. Free to look in no direction but ahead. Hey, you! What? Well, maybe not completely free. Just when I thought I was free to search for my happiness. <laughs> oh, no, you won't get away so easily. <laughs> <laughs> Did I end up? Wow, what a beautiful butterfly! Hello, Mr. Butterfly! <laughs> Hello, tiny lady! <laughs> You're such a happy and beautiful creature. Why, thank you! I'd be happy too if I could fly. Well, you can! You're a silly. You have to have wings to fly, and I don't have any. But I do! Wings and I'd be happy to let you borrow them so you can go anywhere you want in the whole wide world. Hmm? Wee! See, I told you you could borrow my wings. <laughs> Look at that. What an interesting specimen to take home to the family. Gotcha. <laughs> hey, come back. Hey, you beetle, come back. But the 
Thumbelina wasn't coming back. The beetle thought it would be a dandy idea if he took her home with him to show the other bugs. But they were less than impressed. Why, she's only got two legs, pitiful thing, said one beetle. But she's all squinched in at the middle, bellowed another. They went on at length, commenting on how they thought Thumbelina to be such an ugly creature, when in truth she was enchantingly lovely to look at. You look to me like you don't belong anywhere, anywhere at all. And now even the beetle who found Thumbelina began to feel she was a nuisance. Well, she does have a tendency to cry a lot. Hey, time to go on another journey, kid! The beetle flew high above where he and his family had been, and carrying Thumbelina, he traveled for what seemed to be a very long time, until he saw the woods up ahead. He flew down into the woods, found a very beautiful flower, and gently placed Thumbelina upon it. I sure thought you were cute when I found you, but my family couldn't see past their wings, so I'm gonna buzz off now. Take care of yourself. And he left Thumbelina all alone. through the scary nights and the lovely summer days. Now, after all the trials Thumbelina had been through, she'd become a very resourceful little person, drinking her fill from the morning dewdrops and filling her belly from the fruits she found growing wild and abundant in the woods. Come on, you can do it. Good for you. Oh, whoops. <laughs> But soon the weather turned bad, and as resourceful as she may have become, Thumbelina could not live comfortably in the cold chill of winter. You see, each snowflake which fell from the sky was enormous to Thumbelina. What to you or I would seem small and harmless to Thumbelina felt like one shovel full of snow after another, dropping down on her tiny head. And by now, after all her travels and adventures, her clothes had become worn and tattered. They were barely enough to warm her. Oh, it's so cold. Cold. And I'm so very, very tired. <sighs> and Thumbelina fell asleep, shivering under a single dried out leaf for a blanket. And as she slept, the wicked winter snows fell, and fell, and fell, and, well, you get the picture. Mm, I fell asleep. I'll have to keep moving. Oh, it's so cold. I have to do something. So Thumbelina did do something. She walked as far as she could and as fast as her little feet could carry her. Thumbelina walked and walked until finally she came upon a dwelling. Oh, finally, there's someone's house. She crept up to the door and in her little voice, made only tinier from hunger and exhaustion, she called out for help. Help! Help! I don't know why she didn't just knock, but perhaps her little senses were frozen. I thought that I heard a noise out here. You poor trembling thing, you look frozen down to the bone. You must come inside and get warmed up. You're very kind. Thank you. This is so nice. That was delicious. Oh, I'm so glad. Now you must plan to stay here with me, at least through the winter. That would be very nice, and I can help you with the housekeeping and anything else you need. So Thumbelina remained with the field mouse. She stayed warm, dry, safe, and ate a lot of cheese. We're going to have a special visitor today, Thumbelina. Won't that be fun? Sure will, Mrs. Mouse. Hello there, daughter. Mr. Mole, this is Thumbelina. How do you do? How do you do? Your little friend there is a real sweetheart, Dora. Yes, Thumbelina and I have had a wonderful time together. <laughs> oh. Could you come closer? I have poor eyesight and I would like to get a better look at your Thumbelina. <laughs> oh, what a fine young lady. Why, it would be an honor if I were to have you as my new bride. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
If this tunnel lets me come and go without ever having to go out into the awful daylight. But now this tunnel is useless since this large bird has fallen and blocked off the passageway. It appears to be a swallow who never made it south for the winter. They can't all make the long trip, I suppose. It probably got separated from its flock. It's really quite a shame. Do you think the swallow could still be alive? I'm sure it's impossible. Well, I'm glad I wasn't born a bird to be left in the cold to die. You said it, Dora. <laughs> <laughs> but Thumbelina didn't think this anything to laugh about. And when the moon was high and she was sure that the field mouse was deeply asleep, she stole down the stairs into the cold passageway. She brought with her a big blanket of fresh woven wool. Thumbelina knew what it felt like to be cold and didn't like the thought of the poor bird lying bare against the frozen earth. That should keep you a little bit warmer. Mm. <gasps> I can hear a heartbeat, so the swallow must still be alive. Either that or her wool blanket was. <laughs> so Thumbelina tended to the sickly swallow. She brought water for it to drink in the petal of a rose, and the bird slowly began to revive. Uh, if it weren't for you, I most certainly would have died down here. Shh. You're still very weak. It was getting colder and I was on my way to a warmer climate to live when my wing was injured and I couldn't fly anymore. It'll be warm again soon and you'll be able to soar high up above just like you used to. Oh. Just as Thumbelina had predicted, spring had sprung. Or is it spring has sprung? Or was it springing? Oh, I don't know, but it sprang. And with it, so did Thumbelina's new friend. I guess this is goodbye. You saved my life, little friend, and for that I shall be forever grateful to you. Hopefully I'll see you again someday. Hey, well, why don't you come out with me, and together we can fly south. No, I can't. I can't go. It would be so nice if I could. Have a wonderful trip, Swallow. Oh, I will. Thanks to you, Thumbelina. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Swallow. Goodbye. Bye, Swallow. Just like that, the Swallow was gone, and the woods were quiet, and time passed, and soon it was Thumbelina's wedding day. Why, Mr. Moe, you make the most handsome groom I've ever seen. What a lucky bride our Thumbelina is to be marrying you. <laughs> so where is my lucky little bride? Funny, she was just here a moment ago, but now that you mention it, I don't think she's anywhere in the cottage. Now where would a girl run off to at a time like this? She was outside, taking in her last breath of fresh air, because... Once I'm married to Mr. Mole, we'll live underground, and I won't be allowed outdoors again. I've come to say my last goodbye to the beautiful sky. <sighs> goodbye, beautiful sky. Goodbye, lovely birds. <sighs> Thumbelina was overcome with grief as she looked to the sky, hoping for a miracle that would not come. Or would it? Hello down there! Certainly you remember your friend the swallow. <gasps> oh, it's so good to see you again. I've missed you. Today is the last time I will ever see the sun. I came outside to say a final goodbye to the sky. I never dreamt I'd be so lucky to spend this final day with you, Swallow. But why won't you be able to see the sky? Because today I am to become the wife of a mole who lives underground. I'll never be allowed to leave the tunnels. I'm on my way to the south again, Thumbelina. Why don't you come along for the flight this time? I just know that you'll be happier living there because the air is always gentle and the sun will always keep you warm there. Always warm? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is jump on my back and we'll begin our journey. But... Come on, Thumbelina. You can leave that pitch dark room and those cold tunnels behind you forever now. Once upon a time, you helped the little swallow get its wings back. And now I'm here to return the favor and help you start a brand new life. Come on, Thumbelina. This is your chance to be happy. Come on, fly away with me! Oh, how th 
Thumbelina wanted to fly away with the swallow and soar through the clouds to another land far, far away. And she did. She jumped on the back of the great bird and they sailed high up into the air, higher than tiny little Thumbelina could ever have imagined that any creature could fly. They soared over villages, farms, mountains, and rivers. Thumbelina became so enchanted with her flight, she began to feel as if she were a bird herself. Which, of course, she wasn't. Thumbelina, I'm gonna go faster. Oh, it's so beautiful up here. <laughs> yeah, we birds never stay sad because whenever we feel troubled, all we have to do is fly up, up, up and away from it all. Ooh, look at the sun going down. And Thumbelina clung to the bird's back and rested through the night as it soared. Must have fallen asleep. Good morning, Thumbelina. Good morning, Swallow. It seems like we've come such a long way now. <laughs> yep, and we're almost there. What's that? You're about to enter paradise. Now hold on for landing. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> And beautiful it was. It was the most wonderful place she had ever seen. As the bird flew closer, she knew for certain that the bird was right. This was paradise. Look at all those rainbows. Well, our journey's over. But for Thumbelina, it seemed to only be the beginning. Those are the flower fairies. They'll be your new friends. The bird was going to tell Thumbelina about the flower fairies earlier, but thought the news might be too much for her to swallow. Get it? Swallow? Oh, dear me. Who's this fine fellow? He's the king of all the flower fairies. I think he's about to pop the question. Welcome to my kingdom of the flower fairies. What is your name, lovely lady? Nice to meet you. My name is Thumbelina, your highness. You are beautiful, Thumbelina, and it is truly a great honor to have you visit among my flowers today. Will you be my queen, the most precious flower of all? Hmm? Oh, yes, I will marry you. I am honored. This is a day of great celebration. And here comes the happily ever after part of our story. We shall live together forever and ever, me and my radiant queen. Yes! <laughs> and so it was that Thumbelina became the queen of all the flowers. Gee, I hope she's not allergic. <laughs>